Hello, Miriam. Hey. <laughs> Hi to have you here today. So today with us is Miriam that is part of the executive board of the Young Green Federation. And uh, we are going to see with her some <laughs> topics and some ideas about how she will work on this executive board uh, for the coming month and the coming year. So first of all, we would like to uh, see how you can introduce yourself to our EcoSprinter readers. Thank you, Miriam. Uh, so my name is Miriam Shaw. Um, maybe it's good to know that I prefer you use they, them pronouns for me. Uh, she, her is also OK, but I prefer they, them. Um, I am 24 years old, nearly 25 already. That feels very old. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, this is my first mandate in the board. So I'm, um, executive committee member, uh, since I think beginning of June. Um, and I've been active within the Dutch green movements for a few years now, uh, as well. Uh, and but my in, uh, my interests were always a little more internationally focused. I think that also has to do with my background, since I'm um, I have a multicultural background. Um, so my mother is Dutch, and mm -hmm. my uh, father is Northern Irish, and then I grew up in Albania. So <laughs> <laughs> live it all over the place, um, and I think that really reflects in why I went. Why my interest in politics has always been more on an um, international scale. Of course, it's really open. Yeah, yeah, I, I just, I don't think, I, Dutch international politics are okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I've never been very passionate about Dutch uh, politics. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Miriam. So now we go with another question. We would like you to describe yourself in three or maximum five words, if yeah. you can. I know it's <laughs> difficult, <laughs> but let's try. Yes. Um, um, I, def <laughs> I define myself um, as, or at least a, a big part of my identity and how I live in the world is that I'm queer and in every sense of the word. Uh, so. If I describe myself, queer is a very big part. Being queer is a big part of my identity. Um, when it comes to how I choose to live, I try, try to uh, be a compassionate person. So I try to uh, connect with people uh, and try to show compassion to everyone. And um, <laughs> as a third word, Maybe someone with a sunny soul because you are all the time smiling and like uh, not always not only showing compassion but also like uh, transferring to you like good vibes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I. Um... Oh, I'm looking for there. There's a word I'm looking for. What? One, one <laughs> second. <laughs> um, no worries. You said Miriam. maximum of five, but I can't even <laughs> come to three. <laughs> you can try to describe yeah. the word. Like, if we don't find the word, just try to describe it. Um, well, maybe this is a nice opportunity to learn uh, a Dutch word. Um, so uh, the Oops. word I'm thinking of is veerkracht. If you would make it about a person, which means you have the ability and the strength to bounce back. So you're very, it, it's, it's not, it's not like flexible, but it's your, you as a person, doesn't matter what you, what, 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 what happens in life, but you still keep going and bounce yes. back. It's like flexible, but at the same time with the capacity of being resilient and adaptive yeah. and taking conscious of that. So it's yeah. really complex word. <laughs> yeah. Resilience, I think, would be the most direct uh, translation to, uh, yeah. No worries, we learn Dutch today, no yeah. problem. <laughs> okay, 
So now we would like to know what is the focus of this mandate for you? What will be the focus? Yeah, I think so within the, the last year, of course, we got a new political program. Um, it, it, we really needed one. I think uh, <laughs> a lot of work went into that by the MOs as well. So I think finding um, as a so the EC is also is very political. Uh, our functions is very political more than uh, organization. We don't really focus on organizing stuff in that sense. So I think it's finding a way to uh, present this new radical um, political platform. Okay. And for me personally, um, the, the positions that I have and the tasks that I have are focus on working groups as well. So I'm uh, <laughs> spending a lot of time of thinking about um, how uh, together with other EC members and for example, Uzga from the, the office as well. Um, I'm really thinking about how we can uh, find places for political discussion and how we can strengthen working groups um, and how we can use a political platform in there as well. And I think in like big events for this year, the COP is very, has has cost a lot of work of everyone, all the, yes. all the young green people everywhere are uh, so close to a burnout, if I can uh, speak yeah, frankly. Well. Even not the sleeping. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Everybody's so busy with the cop now, it just seems to swallow everything up. <laughs> I see. It's really a challenge this Monday, I would say, because we face a lot of uh, changes and it's a, it's a real challenge for the EC to come. Okay, so now we continue with our interview and the next question will be, uh, what, what is the role of the Green Movement in the place that you are from? Yeah, um, so um, the place where I'm from is kind of hard to define since I have uh, different countries that I'm linked to, uh, but I know the most and have the most experience within the Dutch context, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. Please stop me because I will keep on rambling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, after half uh, an hour I will say stop <laughs> medium, that's enough. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So um, within the Netherlands, um, political culture within the Netherlands is very focused on staying within the lines. Um, so um, we're not very used to a civil disobedience. So, for example, the Dutch Young Greens uh, that are uh, connected to the mother party GroenLinks, which is a green left directly translated, um, they have internal um, an internal rule that you're not allowed to be uh, present at um, civil disobedience protests, for example, or actions okay. um, in the capacity of Dwarf Sense or the Young Greens. So you have a, a group within the Netherlands that's very focused on staying within the lines, being um, politically relevant, but also not too much of a provocateur. Mm. And then you have like the Extinction Rebellions, Fridays for Future, the, uh, this group of Greens um, that are that aren't afraid to uh, draw outside the lines, but are also not very uh, loved by the general public because Dutch people like rules and regulations, and they don't like hey. it if you <laughs> they don't like it if you uh, block the roads on their way to work because that's very annoying, even though it's for climate change. Okay. Yes, this is. We see there the difference between countries and way of uh, behavior between countries. That's 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 nice to know. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe one more thing that's interesting to remark about the Dutch Green context is we have a political party specifically for animal rights. So uh, its name is Partij voor Dieren, which means Party for the Animals, uh, and it's been around actually pretty long. Um, okay. And they're um, but uh, so they're also green, but they wouldn't focus as much on um, human issues at, as they see it. Okay. They're more focusing nature, animals, and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So more like um, the 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 more hippies from the eighties that w uh, <laughs> that are vegan, but also anti-vax, yes. like that kind of vibe. <laughs> it's like yeah. a new wave coming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. I really like this answer because I have learned a lot. <laughs> okay, so we continue going. Um, 
we go to our next question. How, how we will be able to achieve uh, a stronger LGTBE rights, for example, in the future? What, what is the next step that we need to take to improve uh, this movement, to, to keep going and to achieve better, better results than we have now? Yeah, I think um, I think it's very interesting because I, I live in the it's, Netherlands. It's a difficult question. I know. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I think um, first of all, we need to start out with understanding the privileges that some people have and the privilege that other people's other people don't. So, for example, in the Netherlands, um, you're able there's like uh, equal uh, marriage rights as well. Um, and uh, there are queer spaces that people can go to dressed however they want. And um, there were uh, legally also pretty protected. Um, whilst in other countries in the, the, the FIA context, they're, it's, it's so different. The stories of people are so different and what they need is very different as well. So for example, within queer spaces in the Netherlands, I'm, um, I'm busy with, um working on that I yeah I'm, I'm i would be i would focus on for example not using labels as much um okay. so like making everything more queer instead of i am bisexual and that's this my little corner but more mm -hmm. a, a broader collective without for example also the prejudices within the the community and for example in eastern europe you're, you're fighting a whole different fight so I think uh, it's good to start out with knowing what your context is. I think um, within Eastern and Southern European uh, countries, um, first of all, you just, yeah, the first step you need is um, protection by the law. Yes, um, it's, for example, is the case in Spain, we are working on a law right now, mm -hmm. and uh, we hope that they will make possible a lot of change in society because yeah. we are the contrary than in Netherlands. Mm. If we don't have the law, we don't start working on that. No, exactly. In, the, in Netherlands, even if you don't have the law, you work on that. Yeah. We need like the law to establish yeah. the limits and to put yeah. in to put everything at their place. But. Yeah, you need to start out with being protected and recognized. I think that's a fight that you see uh, everywhere else in the Netherlands, we're so privileged. We're already recognized, and mm -hmm. um, w now we can we can nitpick the details of uh, of, of queer life here. Whilst in other countries, um, members of the community need to fight for the right to to actually get married or um, mm -hmm. to have children together with their partner. I mean, it's it's um, we can't do this fight with only people from Western European privileged contexts. We need to of course. build up the community in a global sense as well. That's really a, a good point of view that sometimes we forget. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really important, Miriam, what to say. OK, so uh, we continue going. And next question is related with the vision that we normally have of Eastern and Southern Europe. So how to increase uh, the representation of Eastern and Southern Europe within our federation? What we need to do, for example, for having more uh, representative people from there? Mm. Yeah, I think this is a discussion or a dialogue that we've been having for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it's, it, it's also very important. So I, I don't want to um put it away as an old discussion i want to say it's, it's been going for very long because it is very hard um because there are so many um there's so many um oh um <laughs> you can use that? dutch yeah you want. <laughs> uh, obstacles uh like i think there's obstacles in english yeah it's the same word so there are so many um extra steps that people have to take within the southern and eastern context to actually attend the events which is very facilitated for the west and the north mm. i would say in, in center as well um and we're we're trying our i think we all want more representation um but also for example if you compare dwarves 
that has 5,000 members uh, to, to, for example, the Albanian uh, Young Greens. Yeah. You also don't have the, the, the power in, in capacity and, and people, just basic mm -hmm. numbers as well. And even if you take away like the financial obstacles, you, you still have the obstacle of uh, people that need to work to actually survive and um, they don't have time to or they don't have time they can't make time as easily as people within a more secure financial situation as well yeah. to just go go away for four days uh, to a trip to brussels um yeah yes but i for me so i'm, I'm responsible for the north region um and that's a very lucky region in which there's a lot of willingness as well to like actually participate in FIAG events and there is a lot less obstacles in actually joining and I think um I think that's lovely uh, <laughs> but they, they need less support at this point whilst uh we really need to work and push from 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 FIAG uh, but we also need to listen to what the southern eastern context need because we don't always know because we're not there and we don't understand the, the context. Yeah, it's another bit of privilege in there that you uh, we don't have we as like, for example, me as a Western European person, I do not have the answers for the exact political or uh, capacity needs. So we also need to keep listening. Yes, thank you, Miriam. Okay, so we continue going, and then uh, we have uh, another interesting question. Uh, what will be your focus for this uh, mandate uh, in a way to focus on a topic, for example, mm -hmm. environment, feminist? What you say, like uh, to find a balance between privilege, like uh, to be aware of privilege, that uh, to look, educate people on that. What will be the focus uh, in that way for you? Um, Difficult question. I know <laughs> this one too. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's it's maybe also good to to for for the readers to understand that um, uh, in in my personal uh, situation, I rolled into a a working team because there were only mm -hmm. three newly elected EC members, and the rest have been in the EC for sometimes even three mandates already. So I was first very focused on just understanding FIEC, which can even it can be confusing sometimes, like who is who, um, how do we communicate? So my first period of my mandate has been focused on just learning the ropes, just learning how things go. Um, and also understanding how FIEC uses their voice and the capacity that we have to build people up. And now I've I've like I found my my space, um, and I think for me personally, um, also in my uh, my schooling career, I've chosen to focus a lot on uh, queer politics. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, do you like to extend this topic through the different working groups, something like that? Um, well, it's, it's, it's so complicated. I'm a, yeah, I mean, so I'm a coordinator of the working groups, and um, there is always a like a give and take from how much the EC guides the the working groups with topics and in how far they want to choose them themselves. But I think um, so. Like within my own political work, I want to focus on queer politics and also um, on the coming EGP Council. Uh, there will be, for example, a youth event that's focused on uh, queer youth and um, and et cetera. So I'm finding ways to do that. But then within uh, FIEG and my position, I also want to focus on uh, transparency and uh, democratic systems. And I think work, the working group democracy and inclusion and how we're going to uh, or how I aim to guide them will really work there because uh, last GA, there was a lot less room to look at democratic systems within FIEC. And now with the, with the coming GA in 2022, I really hope to have a lot of input on 
proposing better systems within our own group. Wow, you have a lot of chance on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of steps we can take. Uh, but it looks like a really motivating thing. I really see that in your face yeah. that you are really motivated for that. Okay, yeah. so we uh, we are in our last question, and we would like to have some recommendations to our Echo Sprinter readers, like uh, some podcasts, books, mm -hmm. films that you like that you can recommend to us, please, Miriam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I already forgot about this question. Uh, <laughs> oh, a. Okay. <laughs> Wait one second. Can be Dutch. Syria, like Ukrainian film too, so whatever that <laughs> just came to your mind. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think about like Dutch uh, productions, but also English, because that might be more accessible to other people. Um. Oh, yes, I have one. <laughs> it's not Dutch, um, but it's a series on Netflix. I don't want to promote big corporations, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't see a way around it. Uh, but it's called Pose, so P-O-S-E. And um, I just finished an episode on it, and I think it's one of the best series that I've ever seen about how life was for the queer community in the United States during the AIDS um, pandemic. Ah, yes. oh, Yeah, so um, I never knew very much because uh, about that, because there's, a, of course, still a social taboo on uh, having HIV uh, or AIDS. Um, and it really shows such a beautiful portrayal of how the queer community has, to cl has had to claim their space okay uh, and it's very it's a very beautiful series as well so i can imagine get ready to cry but also just of be course, amazed. i was thinking about that and that i'm yeah. gonna cry from the very beginning of the series yeah no i think that's it for me that has been the like the life-changing series that I've, I've watched this year oh thank you so much medium yeah, thank you sure. thank you for having this time and if you have something else to add please feel free it's now your moment and uh, moment to shine. <laughs> maybe you have something to say to us and or something that you forgot during the interview. But it has been really nice interview. Thank you. Well, I think I would like to encourage everyone because um, I started out within politics because I did a quiz online. And I, really? I didn't know anything about politics and nobody in my in my family or in my school did anything with politics. And I've always said, oh, I've no I've no political talents. Um, but uh, so I'm, I was always very intimidated by the people that were able to, like, analyze the political situations and like knew how to build a campaign or organize a trip for uh, young Greens, and um, I really hope that people that feel that they have no special abilities within politics uh, to encourage them to still look into uh, these kind of positions, because it's not only for the extremely talented few, politics is also like, yeah, everyday things. Wow, that really, <laughs> that is really motivating thing. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you for your time. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much also for the interview. It was really fun to do. <laughs> do you have any further questions or?